Well, it's been a long time since I've done a CSA video, so I think it's time to do another one. I'm having some problems, um, specifically my aftertouch on my, on my keys, mostly in the upper bank. Uh, it seems to take a while for these sections to wake up. I have some keys that don't even respond, like this B. No matter how hard I press, just nothing. But another other keys around it. work fine, but there are varying stages of gain on them. What I mean is some keys have to push really hard to get the effect, other keys are more sensitive, like this one. In fact, it's almost, you barely touch it, it's just overkill. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this keyboard deck apart, I'm going to show you how the uh, mechanicals and the electronics in the actual keyboard itself work. Not as far as the sound and the amplification sections for the key transducers, but the actual transducers themselves. So most keyboards that are aftertouch, the ones that do have aftertouch, generally average the weight of all the keys. So all the keys press on a mechanical assembly with one strain gauge. This keyboard has one strain gauge for every key. So you have a total of 61 independent strain gauges that gives you the ability to play a note, but you can also play you can affect any note. It's kind of hard to do it because it's some of these keys just don't like it. They're just the systems, like I said, it's got problems. But the idea is, when you press the key, you can you can adjust the the tonal quality. There's different settings you can add. For example. So you can add a pulse to the note. Uh, it's almost infinite what you can do once you learn how all the uh, other systems in the keyboard work, which I'm still learning. There are a lot of these systems are still not working properly. Uh, it sounds good, but I have a long ways to go before this machine is, is truly 100%. But by the time I'm done going through this keyboard, and there's a lot more to go, a lot more videos to follow this, uh, this should be one of the probably one of the, the best working CS80s on the planet. So join me. Please. Okay, let's go ahead and open the keyboard up. There's a couple of screws that you remove from the bottom that allow the, the cover to lift up like so. And then you have all your audio cards are on this lift up rack. Okay. And that's your service position for the keyboard. Now, if you're like me and you saw that stuff in the background, you're like, come on, give me a closer look. Why'd you show that and not get a close-up look? So here is a close-up look. Just an edge view of all these of all these cards. For the next step, we need to make sure that the power supply in the keyboard is properly calibrated. Reason being is the aftertouch sensors are biased across the minus 15 and the plus 15 volt. So when we're going to do our tests of our pressure transducers to see which ones are healthy or not healthy or any tests that we need to do afterwards, even after the cleaning, we need to make sure we have a good and accurate stable power supply. So just simply take your black probe, connect to the chassis of the power supply, and the brown wire will be your plus 15 volt and I am within tolerance which is right on the money and minus 15 is a yellow wire either one of them so minus 15.01 so I'm good there if you need to adjust your power supply I have a previous video that shows you on the on the power on the PSU or the power supply unit on how to calibrate 
Okay, to begin disassembly of the key deck, I'm going to remove the screws, the six screws on the fulcrum plate, and then there's this, uh, this plate here, which has got a bump stop for when you press the keys. It's, there's felt underneath, and so I'm going to take these two out of the way, and should be able to lift the keys out, at least the black ones. Pretty stout piece of steel, with a, kind of a rubber block, a rubber strip on it. Uh, it's in really good shape. Actually, really good shape. wire on the right just a piece of felt Okay, now the black keys just lift out pretty dirty. They are weighted, they are all the same, so there's no order or, in, or they don't have to go back where they came from. They're all a universal part for the black keys. Just gotta be careful when you lift them out, lift them out from the front, kind of pull them out so they aren't lifting up on the little lever switches in the back. Okay, something I found is that these keys, the white keys, are, will not, they're somehow retained on the front. So I'm going to have to get underneath this metal plate up front, this mechanism, and see exactly what's going on. So what I've done is I've removed the screws that hold this uh, Tremolo uh, sustain board control panel in place. And you'll see that, like the black keys, it wants to come out but, but I can't here I, I can't remove it so I'm gonna have to get a little more into detail and I have removed the screws actually the screws are still out from the previous videos when I had the the control or the key bed you know where I was doing the, the bottom circuit boards so I can still slide this guy back I can get a little more room and you can see there's a folded steel with a, with a tongue on the key and I, it, that will not allow it to be removed. Well, here's a little more detail. So you'll see the, the metal channel, it's all one piece. So this, this is all one, one piece. So this is not coming apart at this end anytime soon. Uh, but you can see the, the two little sensors, uh, one for the black keys there and one for the, uh, for the white keys. And this, these are the actual pressure transducers. So the foot of the key rests hits on that pad, it's a little uh, kind of a pyramid shaped pad and the harder you press the lower its resistance goes and basically it shifts the voltage from around 0.3 to 0.4 volts with no nothing on it to uh, roughly around 6.4 volts under full pressure so that's our target that these guys should be delivering once they're all cleaned and later on we're going to do some voltage tests and see exactly what we're getting before and after but for now, uh, we've got to figure out how to get these keys out of here. Now, taking a look at the back of the key, of the, of the actual key lever, you'll see there are two leaf switches assigned to every key on the keyboard. You'll see that also that one slightly fires before the second. Now, that first key, well, I'm sorry, that first uh, leaf switch, that goes to the key coder, uh, which I guess if, if this keyboard would have a microprocessor in it, that's probably about as close as we're going to get. In reality, it's just a, it's a really large uh, LSI state machine. Just a, it's a 
hardwired ASIC or uh, what we call an ASIC today, but it's just a, basically it's a large state machine. And that tells what key is pressed and they're held in a, into a, a memory and registers and there, there's a time sharing system that the keyboard uses which gets to be pretty complicated. And I'm, hopefully you can understand that enough. I can explain it to you in, in a way here in, the, in future episodes. But for now, that just tells it that yes, this, this key has been pressed. Then immediately following is the actual initial velocity uh, leaf switch. And that's the second one, the one on the left there. And that is what determines, there's actually, it's a, it's a single pull double throw. So it knows the time between when that switch goes up and when it reaches the top contact. And based on that actual time frame it will, is how the keyboard has determined how hard you press the key. And later in this video, we're going to go into some detail on how this system actually works. Okay, at this point, I went ahead and reconnected this, this ground wire, just temporarily, because um, the machine is still plugged in but turned off. That way, I'm able to discharge myself. I don't want to risk damaging the CMOS. And later on, when I get into doing the, the upper cards here, I'm actually have a, an actual grounding wrist strap. But for now, this, this is sufficient. So I'm looking at how I'm, going to, how I'm going to get into here, how to slide this whole piece back. And it's, there's a lot of screws on the front side, but what has me more nervous is there's actually screws underneath all these leaf switches. And I don't know how to get a screwdriver in there without damaging them. So my other plan of attack is to go and remove the actual switches as, as, as separate banks. So for each octave, you've got a bank, an entire bank of these reed switches. And it looks like four machine screws hold each octave in. So there's a screw right there, 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 and right here. I don't know if you can see them or not where my finger is, but I think if I take those four out, <clears throat> each of these, these switches will, will move back. And I guess the thing is just to be very careful not to move those wires. If one of those breaks, I mean, it's easy to resolder it, but it's a lot of wires to go through. Try to find which one's broken when something doesn't work. So we'll start by taking those four screws out for each octave, and uh, which are a total of six, and hopefully get these keys out of here. One down, four to go. More wires, more no wires. At the far left, don't forget the little bracket they have that keeps this wiring harness from squishing down on that far left set of reed switches or leaf switches. Okay, finally now the white keys can come out. So they're all labeled like a C or F key. This is a D, B or an E. Again, C and an F, a G and A, B and an E. Again, C and an F. And then this one over here on the far right is just C only. So they're all interchangeable positions. Again, just like the black keys, they are all the same weight. So again, it's just how they're put together. Got 
and all these keys are due for a good cleaning good 30 40 years worth almost 40 years worth of grime on them but they're amazingly white which is surprising I figured that most plastics yellow anymore but these things have stayed white Yeah, one thing you might want to keep an eye out for in these nylon little these little wedges where the fulcrum points of the keys sit. If you look down at the base, there's a small like a charcoal gray rubber, like a silicone rubber, like a Y-shaped nub. Is the only way I can explain it. Anyway, I'm missing three of them on my keyboard, and I don't know if they fell out when I took the keys out or not. But keep an eye on it when you take these keys out. Don't rush it like I did. Take your time and make sure that they, these little black little Y-shaped pieces stay in the base of these nylon holders. Finally, after all that work, here we are at the sensors. In the next video, we're going to take these apart, rejuvenate them, lubricate, and reassemble the keyboard. Thanks for watching.